This week, SRP gave the public a heads up way, way in advance, saying they plan to ask their board of directors to raise rates 2.5% beginning about a year from now. Now, we're used to seeing rate hikes in Arizona lately as utilities have faced inflation costs, fuel increases, and these predictions about growing demand, sharp demand. But where is it coming from? It's actually not homeowners. It's manufacturing and AI. Now, Paul, it seems everyone is, is just kind of assuming that our state just must open the doors wide open for data centers. I'm wondering why not try to restrict their presence here if it's going to put such a strain on our energy grid? That's a problem every state is facing. Georgia, Georgia Power is the largest utility there. Yeah. They announced this week that they expect AI will triple their load in the next 10 years. Nationwide, the predictions are about 177% increase to power just from AI. So all those cool apps that you have on your phone or your computer sure. that you think are free, they're not. They're going to show up in your electric bills. So did we all enter this social contract to say we should just build as many as we can? If they want to be here, let's do it. <laughs> that, that's my question as I hear people debating this. Well, I would say no. I think the biggest part of the regulatory compact is ensuring um, reliable, affordable service for customers. But those notice those are pre-existing customers. And what's coming online, these are, you know, prospective businesses that want to come into Arizona. So if businesses require this much power to come in from data centers, advanced manufacturing, there needs to be some, you know, there's got to be a give and take here with some requirements for energy efficiency or some, you know, coupled with some type of load management program for these data centers because that's the only way we're going to ensure that we're making this fair for all customers. And Paul, isn't it fair to say that these companies should pay at least the same amount as homeowners in schools or more per kilowatt? So this is where so I've worked for Wall Street for 20 years and utilities for about 20 years on this. This is where I'm in total agreement with the energy efficiency advocates. I, I strongly believe that when you talk about bringing in a massive load, massive water consuming yeah. mm -hmm. project that has 24-7, 365 demand, you're reshaping the power curve and it is going to drive up prices for customers. The only solution to that is we need some sort of holistic approach as a state that limits and organizes it, or the commissions are going to have the corporation commissioners are going to have to say there's a new rate for AI and it's much much higher than what residential customers pay. Because for myself, I think I'd rather have people living in air conditioning they can afford than have AI chat that people can have fun with on their phone. Great point. Let's go to a couple maps. Data from the Energy Information Administration shows in 2023, the three big for-profit power companies regulated by the commission, APS, Tucson and Electric, UNS, they charge an average price per kilowatt hour that was 11th highest compared to averages of 48 states. For residential price alone, the 2023 average ranked a better, better, 19th highest. But through August of this year, they've gotten relatively worse and in the Southwest alone, Four states are significantly lower than Arizona's big three for-profit utilities. Look at that. New Mexico, 52% lower. Colorado, 18%. Utah, 59%. California is the exception, though it's unusual because total bills are actually slightly lower in California than here because of the amount of energy they use. But let's talk about this. Um, <laughs> is this a time to talk about raising rates in the next two or three years when we see where Arizona sits right now? Well, I'll say I think the big problem here is when you're seeing such high electricity rates or high electricity costs in Arizona, I think the real problem is not just that, you know, businesses are coming in, there's economic development. Yeah. I think it's more of an issue of system inefficiencies. To me, if you're having high, high consumption, but in extremely high rates as well, and in, in a state like Arizona, that's very new. To me, this, this screams major issues in terms of efficiencies in the system. So we need to do what we can to incentivize improving and modernizing our system to reduce that pressure on electric rates. Paul, uh, from 2020 to 2023, the annual growth rate for retail sales in the commercial sector on a whole was 12 times that of the residential sector. Average residential uses declined 5%, businesses 10% in an increase. When we hear APS say there's unprecedented demand coming, it's not from the homes, it's not from us. Why should we be expecting to pay even more? Well. On the home side, there's two different ways to measure. One is the amount that you have to build for the new homes, and that's that's one thing. But sure. For sure, it's it's large commercial that's driving this, and AI is going to put that on steroids. 
So when we get into a formula rate scenario, every year people are going to see what are the costs and the expenses for each one of those elements. Now we're not going to do cost of, study, cost of service studies, but what we'll have now is instead of a looking back after four years, we'll be able to look back every year and see what's happening and make changes because we need to be a lot more nimble. What role should energy, energy efficiency programs play in the next coming years? The formula rate, in my opinion, before we had the plan approved, we should have had an incentive for energy efficiency baked into the plan because the biggest problem that we have right now is we need to reduce peak demand. And right now, as the, the plan was approved, there is nothing that helps to encourage specific reduction in peak demand, which is not only the highest marginal cost for the utilities, which are driving higher electric rates, but it's also the, the dirtiest energy that we use on the system is during on-peak periods. So we should have had incentives from the very beginning that help all utilities to achieve those goals. I think we, can all, we can all agree we need to reduce peak demand, and uh, that's the big question probably next year. Thank you both, Paul and Karen, for joining us in this important debate. Thank you, John. We want to have you back. Coming up. He's led private, charter, and public schools as an educator and researcher. He discusses with me the impact that the private school voucher system is having on Arizona's education landscape.